Welcome to Veris Vignettes. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this digital photography tutorial. This is part one of a multi-part series I'm calling the 10-channel workflow. The 10-channel workflow represents a new approach to image enhancement that takes advantage of the unique channel structure of a photographic image as it exists in the three main color workspaces in Photoshop, RGB, LAB, and CMYK. Let's look at the first step in the workflow, raw processing. The 10 channel workflow has a simple set of goals for raw processing. First, do no harm. We want to end up with the cleanest possible RGB data in Photoshop. So we want to avoid doing any damaging moves in ACR before we bring the image in to Photoshop for a further enhancement. In practice, this means we do as little as possible in ACR before bringing it into Photoshop. That's quite a bit different than the conventional wisdom which suggests that you do as much as possible in the raw processor. We do want to set the white point or gray balance. This is the first chance we get to address any color issues that are in the image. So we're going to take advantage of the white balance tool uh, and setting custom white balances using a gray card or establishing neutrality in the image using the white balance tool. Very important step. We might want to do a uh, fill light or recovery. If there's any uh, missing shadow detail or uh, highlights that are clipped, we can sometimes recover detail using fill light or recovery sliders but never use both of them at the same time, one or the other, and never push them beyond 50%. The other thing that we might want to do is fix any noise issues. All of the moves that we are going to use in Photoshop later on in our image enhancement have a tendency to enhance also the noise as, as we try to bring out more detail and contrast in the image. So it's better to address the noise issues early on before we get into Photoshop and so we want to use ACR's noise removal controls for that. Okay let's open up an image and uh, I can show you with a real image how this all works out. Okay, so I'm going to open up this image here, and uh, it's not ideal. It's a little underexposed. Um, I always want to look at these images with all the slider settings here at zero. It's very important to see where we are at ground level uh, without any uh, in, uh, enhancements in place. So set up your raw processor ACR for zero slider positions, and then we start to evaluate the image. And this one's a little underexposed. The, the camera reacted to the bright white clouds and closed down, uh, rendering the clouds closer to gray, and we need to brighten them up a little bit. So I can use the exposure slider, but I want to look at the histogram up here in the upper right corner. And when I move the exposure slider, I don't want to go too far. I want to leave some headroom. As you can see right here, there's some blank space in the histogram. It's not all the way over to the right. Very important. We want to leave some headroom there. And we'd also like to have some room on the shadow side of things. So on the left side of the histogram, I'd like some space there too. And right now, it's pretty close to the end. It's because we have some dark trees over here in the image. And so it's a good idea to lighten those up. So I will use the fill light. So we'll move this over. In fact, I'll move it all the way to 50% here. And now I've bought some space on the shadow side, some headroom here. And it's about the same as I have on the highlight side. This is the setting that I want to bring the image in. Uh, lots of room in the shadow, lots of room in the highlight. Now our next step here is to make sure we have some uh, neutral uh, a neutral white point in the image. So I'll use the gray, the white balance tool here and I'm going to click on a light gray area in the clouds and you can see that we've adjusted the temperature just a little bit uh, to neutralize the whites and uh, that's all we need to do for the color. 
the only thing left for us right now is to work on the noise. So for that, I'm going to zoom in here. And we'll go to 200%. This is the noisiest area in the image, the shadows. So we're going to use the Detail tab here. And that gives us our noise reduction sliders. So we'll start with the color noise. Um, this image has some sort of green, extra saturated green globules of noise here. And I can use the color slider to sort of neutralize out, give it a more uniform color. And you can see at this setting here, I've eliminated the extra saturated uh, green noise. The color detail slider is used in case we have small areas of different color and we don't want to blur the colors into each other. And this image is not so much of a problem. I'm just going to leave it set right there. But we do have a sort of fine sandpapery noise that's apparent throughout uh, the shadows here. And I can uh, start to attack that using the luminance slider here. So I'll move that up and we can start to see some of that noise disappearing. Uh, unfortunately, the more we use the luminance slider, the more kind of smoothing and smudging we get in the brighter areas in the image. So we'll use the luminance detail slider to help bring back some of that detail. I, I'm going to push this all the way to 100. And we can also use the luminance contrast to kind of put back a little bit of that detail that was apparent before we started removing the noise. I'll go to about 50 here with the contrast and now we can kind of see how much luminance noise we can eliminate before we start getting uh, too smooth. So if I if I put too much you can kind of see that it starts looking sort of smudged out and uh, lacking in detail and as I come back now I can bring back just enough detail to make it uh, work for me. If I take out all the luminance uh, to zero, I bring back the noise. So I want to find a happy medium here, kind of eliminate as much noise as possible, but retain as much detail as possible. OK, so that's looking pretty good to me. And uh, that's it. That's all we really want to do with this image. And you'll notice that the image is sort of flat and dull. And really, this is the ideal. Um, I, I want to avoid clipping any information in any of the three channels. And the only way to ensure that this happens is to make sure that the Im image doesn't have too much contrast or especially too much color saturation. So I'm leaving all my sliders at zero and I just use the fill light and exposure to bring the image into the into the right range so that the histogram is now kind of grouped uh, towards the middle. And now everything else we're going to do with this image we will do in Photoshop. So we'll open it up and begin our next step in the process.